here was the perfect opportunity to jump in and, and really sink my teeth into something that I've been like really excited about for almost my whole life that I could that I could remember. I just didn't know that it was a thing I could do. Hey everyone, welcome to the Creators Channel. My name is Chris Kelly with ProductionCrate.com and today we have a very, very awesome guest, Russ Godier. Russ has done some incredible work for like FUI and HUD hologram designs on movies like Avengers Endgame, Black Panther. He's worked on Spider-Man Far From Home, Thor Ragnarok, Batman vs. Superman, and that's just naming like a small handful of the broad category of work that Russ has worked on. Russ, thanks for being here. Thanks so much for having me. I'm super excited. So there's FUI, right? Yep. Which is like uh, fantasy or fiction user interface. Is that the term you probably would use the most often? Yeah, so uh, that was a term that was coined by a guy named Mark Colleran. Before FUI was a thing, he was the guy doing all of the Hollywood FUI. He was like the one guy around who was doing screen graphics for, you know, like the Born Identity movies and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Like way back before, like anybody was was doing this stuff, he was doing it. And since then, obviously, you know, several studios have kind of grown to take care of all of some of these massive projects that, that exist. Like it's just, it's grown to the point where graphic design, screen design for interfaces and that kind of thing has the weight that those things have to carry to tell the story it's way more than one person can handle. So you have studios like Perception and uh, Cantina Creative and mm -hmm. Territory that have like cropped up that spend so much time and energy devoted to uh, to handling those elements and storytelling beats in, in those movies. How did you get started in this? I moved to New York City to freelance. I'm originally from Northern Virginia. I lived there for a long time and was, you know, working in ads and, and that kind of stuff, doing motion design. I packed up my stuff and, and moved myself and my dog to New York City. I was freelancing there for a couple of years, primarily working in, in advertising, working on music videos and that kind of stuff. Fast forward to like 2014, I, I dropped this like commercial reel that had some like kind of FUI elements in it. And John Lepore from Perception reached out and was like, hey, I'd love to bring you in and talk to you and everything. You know, a couple of weeks later, I started freelancing over there at Perception and I ended up staying around for five and a half years. Wow. Working, I worked there for, for a long time. That's where I really got to flex a lot of muscle in terms of doing some of that stuff that I'd always really wanted to do, but I never really had like a professional outlet for it. But here was here was the perfect opportunity to jump in and, and really sink my teeth into something that I've been like really excited about for almost my whole life that I could that I could remember. I just didn't know that it was a thing I could do until yeah. I could actually do it. What's like the R&D process? My process, when a new project would come across my desk, I would always start with research first. If we're doing a, an interface for a cockpit, like, okay, well, I want to start looking at cockpits. I want to see, you know, what are the what are the elements that build a realistic cockpit? You know, you look at fighter jet interfaces, you look at uh, space shuttle interfaces, you look at like, you know, how does somebody dock uh, with the International Space Station, that kind of thing. Like, what are the things that they need? What is the information that they're being presented with? And from there, you can kind of take like some some inspiration from those things. And then on the other side, what are some things that are kind of unique and interesting in that space? We did a ton for Marvel Studios and they were really receptive to a lot of what we were bringing to the table because mm -hmm. we would bring them things that, you know, that were kind of left field in, in a lot of cases and they they would always hear it out and, and you know, we're always really good collaborators as well. So I think that was that was always a key to success. I mean, there's obviously there's times when it needs to be set dressing and you just need to make somebody look really smart and complicated, but you know, they were always really open and receptive to new ideas and unique ways of treating interfaces. It was it was really, really cool. Do you have like a favorite Marvel project that you worked on? My favorite has got to be Black Panther, but we did so much on Black Panther. It was such an amazing experience to work that closely. We worked really closely with Ryan Coogler. He really wanted the world of Wakanda to feel like it had been developed outside of 
the bubble of Western influence, you yeah. know, like he totally. really wanted that to feel like it, it evolved in its own silo, if you will. You know, he was just so cool to work with, man. He was, he was That's just amazing. Cool. What was your first big like blockbuster style movie? The first one that that I worked on at Perception was Avengers Age of Ultron. So we did the opening title and we pitched and won the main on end title sequence for that. We had pitched a bunch of ideas for the title sequence at the end and ultimately they ended up going with this kind of like statuesque marble theme. Yeah. They wanted to go with something that felt like a monument, you know? They wanted it to feel like it was a you know a statue that was kind of depicting this this kind of like final conflict uh, between Ultron and the Avengers and that was that was the one that they really wanted to go with I think Batman v Superman was the next big one to come along yeah so we did a ton of FUI design for that uh, a bunch of stuff in the Batcave we did there was like one extremely brief moment on the inside of the the cockpit of the Batmobile. You gotta like work on the freaking Batmobile like that. Every and, kid's dream. And then I think after that, we did a bunch of work on Doctor Strange, and then Marvel Studios had asked us to redo their opening logo. When when we were asked to do it, it was right after they had become Marvel Studios like properly as their mm -hmm. own thing. And uh, they really wanted to put like a, a, a big flag in the ground and, and say, you know, this is, this is us, we've arrived. So, you know, we decided to kind of approach it like almost, almost kind of mimicking the filmmaking process in a way where like you start with the comic book pages, but then you start to get kind of uh, concept art and script elements kind of written in there. And then at a certain point that becomes the actual production and then you're inside this kind of like vault of letters. We had built that in such a way that they could go in and switch or add clips from different movies so that it would always stay relevant. Mm -hmm. You know, for like each movie, you add a clip from the previous movie in there. You know, so like it, it's, it's always this kind of like evolving sort of thing. I got a couple speed questions for you. Sure, hit me. Awesome. What movie do you wish you could have worked on? Alien. Ron Cobb was the uh, the production designer on it, and I absolutely love his aesthetic. Like mm -hmm. the aesthetic that he built for that that world was just so cool, and it felt so right. If you can bring just that extra layer of realism to that fantasy world, I feel like you get you get the, a, a little bit more of a connection in the in the design. I just I love it. What would you name your AI friend, like your Jarvis? Uh, what would you name? <laughs> oh, that's such a good question. I hadn't even thought about that. You know, <laughs> Gotta um, be prepared. the first thing that popped into my mind was Ella, which is uh, my dog's name. That's so a good name. I might I might go with that. I might go with that off the top of my head, but I reserve I bet that the was right like on to the, change the... my mind later. <laughs> <laughs> what is your all-time favorite like single shot or like single effect that you've worked on? Oh, that I've worked on? That you have worked oh, on, Oh, yeah. let's see. Off the top of my head, when it comes to FUI, the thing that probably stands out the most is Tony Stark's jet where Peter Parker is putting his suit together at the <laughs> end of... Um, Spider-Man Far From Home. Iron Man, the way that they imagined the interaction of the holograms in that in the very first movie was so cool. It was yeah. it was such a shift. I think having a having a, a chance to even put a tiny, tiny stamp on that in the Marvel Cinematic Universe was was a, a big moment for me. If you had to lead a battle against the underworld, like demons are coming out and they're Ooh. like, they're ready to conquer civilizations and you have 10 seconds to give a speech to rally the whole world, what would that 10 second speech be? <sighs> Man, okay, 10 second speech. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna wing it, we'll see. Today marks the turning point. This is the moment where we decide if we are going to live or we are going to die. This is not about your ideas or my ideas, this is about survival. 
That's, that's very unifying. Leave your differences behind, focus on yeah. survival, and let's kill us some demons. Yes, exactly. <laughs> 100%. I love it. Can you tell our listeners and our viewers where they can find your work? My website is robotastronaut.tv. If you want to see some of the things that, that I've worked on, you could visit Perception's website, which is experienceperception.com. Yeah, Russ, really, really nice talking with you. And yeah, love to connect Likewise, again. Chris. Likewise, Chris, thank you so much for having me on. This is awesome. Totally, man. Yeah. Cool.